All right, guys, I am back. And uh, today I'm going to get this yoke put on here and get it onto our engine stand over there. So I did notice that it is different than the M96 engine that I did before, um, slightly. I had to get a whole bunch more washers. And this is the bolt that I used for the uh, other engine. I had to get a um, thinner uh, but longer bolt. Uh, this is not it. I have to go find out where it is. I just bought them. Oh, it's on here already. So, uh, yeah, this one is the right thickness, but it was not long enough. This one was too thick. So, uh, that is on there. Um, the, so these bolts, this top one is a through bolt still, but the other ones needed more washers. And this one over here is going to need more washers than the one that I used before because uh, it bottoms out before it gets all the way in it that did not happen in m96 all right so to get this thing on here i'm gonna be try to be lazy and do this by myself instead of getting that big jack out and lifting this thing off the table it slides really easily so i'm going to slide it over to the end of my table and i'm going to line my jack stand up here and uh just lift the stand up, made it to here. Actually, I'll probably lower the table just a little bit lower. Hook these up and then lower the table all the way and it should be on here. Hey, it worked. All right, of course now because it's at a different angle, it's leaking oil. It's coming out now, so I gotta put some more pans under that and uh, put this where I wanna keep it. All right, I'm gonna remove this now so we can just start getting the oil to drain out of this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the water pump off. It has a bunch of 10 millimeter uh, bolts around it. And when you're reinstalling, you need to pay attention because they are, uh, some of them are different lengths. So you can see this is the first one I took out. It is longer, so a long one goes down here and then shorter up here. Another longer one right here. We got some coolant coming out. Gonna let it drain for a minute into the pan down there. All right, he seems to be pretty much done. And okay, we have the stock plastic impeller, it looks like, which I like. And uh, a gasket, of course, will need to be replaced. Next up, we have the thermostat here to remove. It has four of the uh, E10 Torx bolts. drain and uh, make sure I bring the gasket with me. It's stuck on there. All right, got to replace that. All right, next I'm going to remove this black plastic piece. It is held on by a bunch of uh, T30s. So I'm just going to break them all loose.
So the one that goes right there is longer than the other ones. Another of the long ones. All right, so it seems like they're all long except for the uh, three on the top left. Down here. Oh, that one down there is a short one as well. And maybe it's just stuck on with some gaskets. Let it drain some coolant. So it looks like this is actually partially captured behind the metal piece. So they might have to come out at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all the bolts for our uh, oil pump in here and take that out. All right, one T30 right here. And another one right here in this corner. And then we have a bunch of 10 millimeters around the face. We have a really large E14 right here. Get these 10 millimeters. <clears throat> oh, we got another uh, of the T30s here. Ooh, a really long one. Labeling these bolts oil pump cover front console. All right, let's see if we can't remove this now. tapping it a little it's starting to come apart and it's starting to leak some oil so that's good let it drain a little it's kind of shaking it back and forth a little bit and it is separated so I don't want all of these gears to fall out when I open it one gear stayed in place and then our gasket here as well. So the way this works usually is that gear sits in there and those just right around in here. There's a little uh, pressure guy right here that don't need to remove right now. So the one that is hollow uh, goes to the right and slightly below. I will make a note of that. Pull this guy back out. The longer shaft goes in. Just gonna put it in place. <clears throat> put it in place here in the console for now. 
the other guy I will remove and this one looks to be fairly identical. The one that sticks out on this one might actually be a little bit longer. I don't know. Hard to say. Place him in here. We'll note that it's really dirty down here. There's some uh, nasty black stuff in there. So I guess you want to remove this plate and the internals first before removing the other bolts around the console. Okay, everything else should be disconnected now. But there is a uh, bearing, essentially a fixed bearing that the intermediate shaft is resting on and riding around. So it's gonna to have to come straight out. So this piece is rotating around that bearing. Still kind of surprised that... Ah, okay. I guess that was just stuck on there. All right, so we got the uh, gasket for this. Obviously need to be replaced. There is a gasket on the other side. It's just sticking in there. Okay, now let's put that off. <clears throat> All right, well, I don't want to force that and break it, so I'm going to come back to that later. 24 millimeter. All right, gonna go ahead and take this piece off. More T30s up here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. It's got its own little gasket there for a little coolant waterway. At this point, I think I'm going to flip this thing upside down and do what probably a lot of you have been waiting for, remove the sump cover finally and look into the bores from there. Also, lots more fluids will come out. bunch of E10s up here to uh, loosen and then remove. It was all gunky and nasty. Ooh, I bought this new tool because I never knew they existed until I saw one recently. So uh, yeah, now's the perfect time. Comes with this little cute handle. Let's see, so I guess you just... Guess you just line it up in the crease and... spot here. It's probably easier. Yep. Yeah. Just pops right 
it off. So after you get it started, then I bet this thing is pretty cool. Okay. Now you can hit it from the side and go around. Give it a C plus. Ta -da. That is some thick nastiness. Okay, so this is what she looks like on the inside. Got some uh, pickup pumps filter here. Looks like we got some little piece of goop right here. Pick that up. Feels and looks like a little piece of gasket or something. All right, more E10s. I'm gonna start pulling these things out of here. Alright, a ring down here, replace that. Two bolts holding this on. This one's got an O ring around there. And these things are reversible, by the way, so either one can be used for either side. And then only on the bank one side, we have uh, that little bracket. Gonna remove that. I still haven't uh, removed this cable yet, so it's a 13 millimeter nut. And a 13 millimeter socket on the other side. Okay, so theoretically at this point, point you can take a bore scope and stick it through there and get to the cylinders over here but it still requires a bore scope you can't just see it and we're about to crack open the halves so let's move on to that i think it'll be a lot more fun so let me rotate the engine again let's see what fun stuff comes out now All right, lots more oil coming out now. And now we have these E10s all the way around the case. So you just want the heads to be facing up because that means bank one will be on the bottom. We're going to lift bank two off of the top. And just so our front console doesn't just fall off this piece here, I'm putting one of the T30s on the bottom connected to bank one uh, just in loosely. I don't know if you need to. So also I've not removed the chain tensioner yet. 32 millimeter giant socket. Let's get that guy out of there. I'm gonna go around and start loosening all of these.
All right, so uh, there are four micro encapsulated ones. This one, this one, this one, this one, the blue ones. So that means that from the factory, it is Loctite on the bottom of the threads and under the head. They call it micro encapsulated. All right, so the last two case half bolts are behind this piece. So I removed that screw again, and I forgot that I'm gonna need to try to get this out, or at least separate it enough that I can get to the bolts. I think I'm remembering that I could just rotate this enough. All right, plan B, I'm gonna just start trying to gently pry at this and separate it from a few different angles. get access to one of the two bolts now. I guess I'll go ahead and get it out while I can reach it. I just went back to watch my uh, other video on the disassembly of the Boxster engine and uh, yeah all I did is rotate it back and forth and pull and pull and it took forever to come off and it was a pain. And I said, if anybody has a better idea, let me know, but nobody has let me know yet. So I'm gonna wrestle with this for a long time and get it off. All right, new, hopefully easier tactic, rubber mallet, whack on this until I rotated it really far to the right. And I could not get the extension down with the bit on it, but I took the um, bit off, stuck the extension through there, then put the bit on. Now, I can get it on the bolt, I'll be able to remove it, and then I will just go back to my original plan, get this bolt to line up down here, and uh, bolt it on the bottom so it doesn't fall off. Just leave it on as I lift cylinder two off. I mean, bank two, you know what I mean. All right, perhaps not surprising to you, after unbolting that, this is a lot easier to turn back and forth, so I think I will be able to just pry it off. Maybe, we'll see. All right, remove this big, long T50. Oop, almost forgot, we got the IMS bearing here that is still holding these halves together. So I have to remove these two. Uh, the bottom one can stay connected. And then remove that nut in the middle. All right, I got the top two removed. Those are the two that are holding the case together. Now we can go ahead and uh, pry it. There's another pry point right here and one on the other side in the middle. All right, pried it with both sides. The case is loose and wobbly and that probably means that all my fighting with this was for no reason. I could uh, just waited. You can see it is separating right here. Now I can do it with one hand pretty easily. So these are the O-rings that we're fighting. Nice and crusty on there. And that is the other end of our intermediate shaft. All right, so you can see that they are getting ready to separate. Before we do that, just to make it easier, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two. Each one is holding in one of these chain guides. So let me take that one out and we'll remove you. And this guy will free him up. All right, started separating the case. Wouldn't come all the way up. Realize that thing is still in there. That is a 12 millimeter hex. Oh yeah, that's just the plug for putting the uh, rest pins and stuff in. So uh, that shouldn't have been 
holding it together. Maybe I just need two people to lift and maybe it's just the pressure of the piston rings in there that's holding it in place. All right, I lifted this thing off myself somehow. Got it off of that guy. We set it over here. So now we'll be able to look at our cylinders a little better and the skirts of these guys. That's what I'm curious about. Uh, that side actually looks pretty good. All right. the oil off you can see a little bit of wear right there at the very top and up here a little more wear there and an awful lot there so let's walk around to the other side which is the top of the engine and yeah a lot of wear going on here on the top which is the part of the cylinder that we saw. So yes, four, five, and six are having some issues. So this is cylinder six, the notorious one, and that's the one, that's the cylinder that had the most noticeable damage. So yeah, I'm gonna guess that could be a contributing cause for some of the issues I was seeing. All right, now with the piston out, you can see that's number six, number five, and number four back here is the best of the worst. All right, just pulled off that seal, dropped it down there, pulled off the RMS rear main seal, dropped it down there, took off the bottom bolt for our IMS so we can Pull that out at some point. All right, I prematurely pulled this bolt out from underneath here where our chain is. There's one more bolt that's under there we got to get out that is holding on our crank carrier into here. All right, so the one I already removed came from right there and the other one that needs to be removed is on the outside right there. All right, so this thing is now detached and is ready to be lifted out. I uh, grabbed it and pulled it up on it a bunch on the front and felt it become loose a little bit because it is sitting on some locating pins and then I did the same on the back. It came loose, so now I just have to wait till I have somebody that comes over and helps me lift this thing out because it is super heavy and it still has its three pistons uh, in the cylinders below it. So as you can imagine, these videos are a ton of work to film. Now I'm sitting here editing them. So uh, I just wanted to ask you guys to give them a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Uh, it would really help me out. Uh, it makes making these videos for you guys worthwhile. So I uh, hope you're enjoying them. And uh, if they're not helpful, at least they're entertaining. So Again, appreciate it, guys. I'll see you on the next video.